Hi there! Welcome to the 12 episodes of the Filters tutorial. Today we will go through the last practical application of the Silent Key topology, the Band Stop Filter, which is also named the Notch Filter when the bandwidth is very narrow. This filter allows a signal to pass through any frequency but the one on which it is centered. It is used in all those applications that require the removal of a specific frequency or a range of frequencies from a signal. Let's dive into this subject without any further ado. Here is the picture of a typical magnitude body diagram for a band stop filter. A minimalistic configuration requires that this filter has at least one pole followed by one zero. In such a case, we say that such a filter is a first-order filter. However, if it has two poles close to each other, or even at the same frequency, followed by two zeros, then it will be a second-order filter, and as you should remember, it will have a slope of 40 dB per decade, or 12 dB per octave. The corresponding first-order filter would have instead a slope of only 20 dB per decade, or 6 dB per octave. The filter we will study today, since it is based on the silent key topology, it will have a slope of 40 dB per decade, since it is a second-order filter. Unfortunately, although silent key filters work very well as low-pass and high-pass filters, they don't work as well either as a band-pass filter or a band-stop filter, as we have already seen in the previous episode. To make this topology work well with such filters, we need to use them in pairs. In the case of the high-pass filter, we have previously seen how that can be achieved using two filters connected in cascade. In the case of the band-stop filter, we need to use a different solution, though. Here is a block diagram of the solution for the band-stop filter. You can see that we still have to use two filters, a low-pass one and a high-pass one. This time, however, we inject the same signal in both filters. The two outputs are then added together through a mixer stage, obtaining another version of a bandpass filter. This passband filter, however, has the capability of transforming itself in a stop band filter by simply injecting its output in an inverting amplifier with a gain of one or greater, depending on our necessities. The resulting effect of the inverting amplifier is to obtain something that behaves exactly like a band stop filter. To achieve that, we need to choose the cutoff frequencies of the high pass and low pass filters so that the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter is lower than the one of the low pass filter. Only in this condition we will be able to get a band stop filter. The center frequency of such a resulting filter is given by the geometric average of the two original cutoff frequencies, which is obtained by extracting the square root of their product. Now that we have seen the principle that makes this filter work, let's examine a practical case, where we assume we want to design a band stop filter centered at 10 kHz. Let's start by drawing a general schematic for the filter we need. We can start from the low-pass filter. A low-pass silent key filter can be designed this way, with two resistors R1 and R2, and two capacitors C1 and C2. Then we draw the high-pass filter. This time we have the two serial capacitors C3 and C4, and the two resistors R3 and R4. To both the outputs of these filters, we add now a resistor in series, and they will be R5 and R6. These resistors, along with this op-amp acting as an inverting amplifier, provide the mixer for the signals coming from the left. The op-amp will also have a resistor R7 connected between the output and the inverting input. This resistor acts as a negative feedback, which allows us to set the gain of this stage. If we make R5, R6 and R7 all the same value, we will have a stage that provides an output signal which is the inverse of the exact sum of the two input signals, which come from the two silent key filters on the left. 
assuming that the high-pass filter has a cutoff frequency f1 and the low-pass filter has a cutoff frequency f2, we will obtain a filter with a body diagram like this, where the center frequency of the complete circuit is equal to the square root of f1 times f2. To calculate the component values of the filter, we can proceed by independently design the high-pass and the low-pass filter, and then add the calculations for the mixer and the inverter stages. So, let's assume we want to design a filter centered at 10 kHz, with a band of about 1 kHz. This means that square root of f1 times f2 equals 10 kHz. To remove the square root from this expression, we need to square all the members of this equation. Then we can express f2 as a function of f1, like this, where the numerator is the square of 10 kHz. Since we have said that we want a bandwidth of 1 kHz, let's fix the value of f1 to 9.5 kHz. From the previous equation, we will have f2 equal to 10.53 kHz. F1 will be the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter. F2 will be the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. So basically, we would have a body diagram with this kind of shape, and the inverting stage will transform the shape like this other one. Let's now design the high pass filter with cutoff frequency F1 equals 9.5 kHz. We will follow exactly the same procedure we have seen in the video on the sudden key high pass filters. We therefore define the two intermediate variables m and n such that r3 equals mr, r4 equals r over m, c3 equals nc, c4 equals c over n. Since we are aiming to a bandpass filter, we want smooth edges of the body diagram, and we want the highest possible slope. And for that, we need to use a Q-factor of 1. From the definition of a Q-factor, and using n equals 1, so we can have two identical capacitors, we obtain that m equals 1 half. From the definition of the generalized cutoff frequency, and using a value of 10 nanofarad for the generalized capacitor, we obtain a resistance value of 1.68 kilo ohms. With these values, we can now calculate the actual value of the components of the filter and adjust them according to standard values. And so, for R3, we will use 820 ohms. For R4, we will use 3.3 kilo ohm. And for C3 and C4, we will use 10 nanofarads. Now, let's take care of the low-pass section of the filter. This one must have a cutoff frequency F2 equal to 10.53 kHz. Using again the intermediate variable M and N, we again define R1 equals MR, R2 equals R over M, C1 equals NC, and C2 equals C over N. And again, we need to use a Q equal to 1. Using the definition of Q for the low-pass filters, and fixing M to 1, so we can use identical resistors, we obtain that N must be equal to 2. From the definition of the cutoff frequency, we can now work on the generalized R and C. So, using a capacitor of 10 nanofarad, we obtain a resistor of 1.51 kilo ohms. And now we can calculate the actual value of the components. R1 equals 1.5k, R2 equals 1.5k, C1 equals 22 nanofarads, and C2 equals 4.7 nanofarads. All in all, with the adjusted values of the components, due to what we can find in the market, the actual cutoff frequency will be 10.43 kHz, and F1 will be 9.67 kHz, which will give us a calculated center frequency of 10.05 kHz, which is definitely close enough to what we actually need. And now, based on the values we just calculated, here is the final schematic of the bandstop filter, where I have used a value of 100K for the three resistors R5, R6 and R7. 
These three resistors, in fact, just need to be of the same value to make the filter shape symmetric and to obtain a gain of 1. If I wanted a different gain, I would have just need to change the value of R7, knowing that the gain is given by R7 over R6, which is the same as R7 over R5. The rest of the schematic is pretty much standard. Since I used two LM358 dual op amps, I had an extra amplifier. To prevent it from affecting the rest of the circuit, I connected its inputs to ground. On the far right, we see instead the power supply of the op amps, along with their capacitor filters. To make sure this design reflects an actual band stop filter centered at 10 kHz, I inputted the schematic in an analog simulator, the same I used in other occasions. After running the simulation, I obtained the body diagram in the picture, close enough to what we expected. With this, our discussion on the sun and key filters is finally complete. Across all the episodes, we have described the general topology of the filter, and we have seen how to implement the two base filters, the low-pass filter and the high-pass filter. From there, we have seen how to combine such filters to derive a band-pass filter, and today how to derive a band-stop filter. In the future episodes of the series, we will learn about other types of filter design, why they are used, and their peculiarities. To avoid missing those episodes, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to enable the notifications by clicking on the bell if you haven't done so already. See you on the screen, and as usual, happy experiments! <laughs>